We all know the thrill that comes with the hustle and bustle of traveling by train in India. Navigating your way through the crowds, trying to listen to the announcements on the loudspeaker, and then climbing onto the coach looking out at the sea of people around you. You probably think, looking at all these passengers, that the railways is making some big bucks. But turns out, the railways finances are actually hanging on by a thread. Or rather, hanging on by one very specific coach. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Data Point. If you haven't guessed yet, today we're talking about trains. For millions of people across India, trains are their chosen, preferred, and most accessible form of long distance transportation. We've got a lot of options when it comes to the coaches we want to ride in, so let's pull those options up. We've got the sleeper class, the second class, the first class, the AC coaches, and the executive class. Out of all the coaches available, 90% of passengers travel in second class. This isn't too surprising considering that second class seating makes up a majority of the coaches in Indian trains. The sleeper and first class carries just 4% of the total passengers each, and third AC carries 1%, and the rest of the coaches make up an even smaller part of that. When it comes to train travel, it's not just about the number of passengers, but it's also about the distance that they travel. The greater the distance, the higher the need for comforts like a sleeper coach or air conditioning. So the share is recalculated in terms of passenger kilometers. A passenger kilometer is essentially the number of kilometers one passenger travels. Here, the sleeper class coaches gain more prominence, forming 26% of passenger kilometers traveled, while the share of second class decreases to 63%. Third AC forms 7% of passenger kilometers, and the rest of the classes form a pretty insignificant amount. However, in both cases, the share of passengers and passenger kilometers remain very low in the AC coaches compared to the other classes. Here's where the story switches lanes. While third AC carries just 1% of passengers, its share in earnings from ticket sales is 21%. That's huge. No other class of train travel carries so few passengers and manages to bring in that much money. The second AC forms just 8% of ticket earnings and the first AC just 1%. The second class forms only 37% of total earnings. So that's what makes the third AC so unique. And if that wasn't enough, consider this data point. The first AC charges 273 paise per passenger per kilometer. The second AC charges 160 paise. But the third AC's rate is just 127 paise per passenger per kilometer. And yet, like I said earlier, the third AC manages to contribute 21% of total earnings, while second AC forms just 8% of ticket sales. So despite relatively lower charges, third AC clearly beats the other AC coaches in revenue share. There are many reasons for this, a big one being the number of seats available. The third AC coach has more seats than the rest of the AC coaches, and unlike the first and second AC coaches, third AC seats are usually sold out. So at this point, you're probably thinking, all right, so what? Here's the thing. The third AC is the only class of travel that has made consistent profits for the Indian railways. Shocking, right? Every other type of coach has seen operational losses throughout the past few years. The only exception to that being the AC chair car, which made profit between FY17 and FY19. Now that you know what the third AC is capable of, here's some good news. Recently, the Indian Railways experimented with an AC three-tier economy class. They increased the number of berths from 72 to 83 and reduced the tariffs by 6 to 7% when compared to the usual AC third class. This experiment has paid off. Over the past year, these economy coaches have earned more than 230 crore 
by ferrying 21 lakh passengers. The railways is going to introduce more of these coaches. But why is the railways taking these steps? Put simply, the railways finances are not looking good. And to understand the state the railways is in, we have to take a look at the operating ratio. The operating ratio measures the amount the railways has to spend to earn 100 rupees. Between financial year 2009 and FY 2016, the operating ratio stayed in the 90 to 95 percent range. But in FY 2018, the operating ratio spiked to 98 percent and stayed in the 96 to 98 percent range until FY 20. So with the railways essentially needing to spend 98 rupees to earn 100 rupees, it makes sense that they want to bring in more third AC economy coaches. The aim is to make more money and to fill the void that's currently in the railway's bank account. All you have to do now is book your third AC economy ticket and help the Indian railways continue to chug along.